What is up guys, it's time for Dylan back at it again with another crypto video. What is up guys it's time for Dylan back at it again with another electronics tutorial of course we are continuing on with the most complete starter kit by Elegoo for the Uno R3 and what we're going to do in today's video is lesson number 10 which is all about the ultrasonic sensor module so the ultrasonic sensor is great for all kinds of projects that need distance measurements avoiding obstacles as example so it's basically radar essentially the HC-SRO4 is inexpensive and easy to use since it, we will be using a library specifically designed for these sensors. So without further ado, let's jump into our box, pull out what we need. What we're going to need is, of course, the R3 Una, the ultrasonic sensor, and then four female-to-male wire jumpers. So let's get it. Diving into our box, what we're going to need, like I said, is our Uno. Bingo, bango. It's right here. So the ultrasonic sensor is right here in the middle. Bingo, bango. It looks just like the picture. You can't really mess that one up. Then, of course, the female to male wires are all back here. We still have the four from our last lesson where we connected the passive buzzer with the tilt ball switch. So, let's put this away because we are now done with what we need from the box to continue on with our lesson. So, let's get it. So, component introduction. So, the ultrasonic sensor module HCS. R04 provides two centimeters to 400 centimeters of non-contact measurement function. The ranging accuracy can reach two millimeters. So 400 centimeters, it's like 160 inches, which is about 13 feet. So pretty cool. You can definitely use this to measure everything inside of a room. If you want something stronger, look it up. But this is pretty cool for a beginner packet that this thing, this little device right here, can measure up to 13 feet away using ultrasonic sound and receivers. Pretty cool. So, how does this thing work? The modules include ultrasonic transmitters, receiver, and control circuit. The basic principle of work. One, using I.O. trigger for at least 10 microseconds high-level signal. Two, the module automatically sends 840 kilohertz and detects whether there is a pulse signal back. Three, if the signal back through high level, time of high output IO duration is the time from sending ultrasonic tone tuning. Test distance equals high level time times velocity of sound. So speed of sound, or the velocity of sound, but speed of sound is the velocity of sound without a direction. Velocity is the speed with a direction. Times the high level time. That way you can figure out the distance of something. So the timing diagram is shown below. You only need to supply a short 10 millisecond, sorry, 10 microsecond pulse to the trigger input to start the ranging. And then the module will send out an eight cycle burst of ultrasound, of ultrasound at 40 kilohertz to raise its echo. The echo is a distance object that is a pulse width and the range in proportion. You can calculate the range through the time interval between sending trigger signals and receiving echo signals. Formula. Microseconds divided by 58 equals centimeters, or microseconds divided by 148 equals the inches, or the range equals high level time times velocity divided by 2. We suggest you use over 60 um, millisecond measurement cycles in order to prevent trigger signals to the echo signal. Pretty cool. And this is what the timing diagram looks like. Pretty interesting. Trigger input to module. Boom. Sends the 10 microsecond TTL which is this, the trigger, high level signal, boom. So my assumption is once it picks something up, it's gonna send the burst, eight cycle, 40 kilohertz sounds, and then listen for something on the receiving end, which is this, the echo pulse. So boom, this happens, then this, then this. Input TTL lever signal with a range in proportion. Pretty cool. This is what the schematic looks like. Yeah, so it looks like holding the device like this, right? If you turn it towards yourself, it's oriented like this in the picture. So this is what it looks like. Or since we're mirrored, since we're mirrored, this is what it looks like on the picture. Boom. 
and you can see it's actually labeled. It says trigger. You can see the top, then trigger, then echo, and then the bottom one, ground. So same exact wiring. The same exact way this is set up is the same exact way the schematic is set up. So it should be pretty simple. It looks like the top pin is going to be our 5 volt connection. The next pin will be our trigger, which goes to D12. Then the echo, which goes to D11. And then the ground, which goes to the ground. Cool. So it should be pretty simple to wire. And of course, looking at the connection, this is exactly how we're going to do it. So let's go ahead and switch on over to our phone view and start wiring this bad boy up. So just like I said, taking a look here, boom, you can see the top one is where we need to go to the 5 volt. So boom, we will go ahead and connect this. Bingo, bingo. Just like that, red to the 5 volt. Boom. We're going to go blue to 12 pin, which for me is brown. To the 12 pin. We would go white to the 11 pin, I believe. Yep. And then we would go black to ground. And I'm just going to do the ground over here next to this one. Boom. So as you can see, red goes to the 5 volt, black goes to the ground, and then we did white to the 11, and uh, brown to the 12. So that's it. Now we can plug this sucker in, and come on back to our computer so we can get the code. So let's take a look. Using a library designed for the sensors will make our code short and simple. We include the library at the beginning of our code, blah, blah, blah. So after wiring, we're going to go to our folder, just like last time, just like every time we've had a tutorial. What you're going to do now is just locate your folder, wherever it happens to be. Mine happens to be on the desktop, right here, Elugu. Wherever you put your PDF, basically. English code 10. Boom. Open this sucker up. And then, of course, close this guy. And then what do we need to do? We need to also install the library. So to do that, you're just going to go up to Sketch, Include Library, Add Zip Library, and then you're just going to go to the same exact spot we were just at. So boom, English Code 10, and it's right here, the zip file. Just click it and click Open. Bingo, bingo. Library is installed. So before you can run this, make sure that blah, 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 otherwise your code won't work. Once we click Run, what we need to make sure is that we have this monitor open. And this monitor is going to be the, the information that tells us how far something is away. So let's go ahead and try this. So let's go ahead and make sure we have the correct port selected. And then choose our board. And then upload the code. Boom. So it's uploading. It is done uploading. And now what we need to do is open up our serial monitor. So let's go ahead and switch views, and I want you to see. So pointing up there behind me, there's my green screen, there's me. So this thing is pointing way up there, and what it's measuring right now is 1185 centimeters. So that's how far the ceiling is away. So if I put my hand in front of this, 17. As you can see, pretty close, right? And we are getting 10, 10, 10. If I move it a little closer, 6. If I start moving it away, we'll hold it right here. Let's see what it says. 28, 27, 27, 27, 20, oh, 59. Oh, I moved my hand. See? Maybe it's going to pick up my face. 67. 55, 57. So it looks like this thing actually works. Boom, I put my hand here. It gets 39. I move it a little bit further away. 207, 73, 68, 68. Move it, gets the ceiling again. There we go. Now if I come back into frame, 88, 207. 
So I'm guessing the 207 that it's picking up either might be the brim of my hat or it might be the corner of my green screen up here. If it doesn't get this, then it gets way back there in the corner of the room. So pretty cool. This thing is pretty awesome how it works. What I will say is this, like taking a look at the code, how does this code work? Well, it looks like just like in every other tutorial, we define the pins, which are going to be basically the echo and the trigger pin. So the trigger pin is 12, which is the second parameter in this constructor for this class, SR04. So SR04 looks like it is a class. And if we come and look at the code, let's see, boom, documents, Arduino, library, boom. I want to look at the code. I'm going to open this with Notepad. And we will also open up this with Notepad. Just to understand how this actually works. So we have our class. The dot H is basically like the instructions of how you need to format the actual source code. So the header file is basically your function definition. So this is just essentially like this. You have one line, which is basically how the function is going to be working. And if there's return types and there's going to be some uh, comments here that explains exactly what it's going to do. So it looks like we have a constructor. The constructor is basically like creating the object. You're constructing the object. And this is how you actually create your object in your code. So like right here, we have our class, which is SRO4. We're naming our instance of this class, the, the object that we're actually creating, that we're going to use in the code. We're naming it the same thing, SRO4. We're setting it equal to, boom, the constructor. So this is creating it. And what, what does it take in? It takes in an echo pin which is digital input pin for measuring distance, and a trigger pin, which is, boom, a signal generated for the SRO4, which is where this thing is, things are going to be plugged in. So that's the first thing we do. And then we define a long. A long is basically an int. You're able to store more data because the size of this variable is twice as big as an integer or an int. It's still an integer value, though, so it's still a whole number unlike a double or a float or something like that. So pretty cool. So what else do we have? It looks like we have in the setup, serial.begin. So serial looks like that's for the serial monitor, this thing. And it's setting the baud rate to 9600. Delay, we've seen delay. In our loop, we're setting our long variable to this instance method class. So what is a method class? A method class is just a function that's tied to a object or a class. So for the SRO4 class, you need to have an object of that class, which we're calling SRO4, little SRO4. We could rename it like my sensor or something, which I will do. My sensor. We're just going to do that. my sensor and if we deploy this code it should work oh serial monitor let's take a look yep still works cool so i'm just doing that just so we're not confused this is the object that we're creating of this class the class is just basically like the instruction so we've created it We've set it up with the pins. Now we're starting to use it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to use my sensor dot distance. What is dot distance? Well, right here. Do a measurement for the sensor. Return distance as long in centimeters. So long distance. Boom. That's all it does. And the way that the code actually works coming in here, boom. Long D equals zero. Duration equals zero. Okay. Digital right. You've seen this before. We have the trigger pin. Low, which means off, delay, two. So delay microseconds is just like the delay function that we've been using, except it's just a little bit different. Two microseconds. Then we turn on the pin. We turn on the trigger pin. 
we delay another 10 microseconds. Then we're going to turn off the trigger pin. Delay. Duration. In, uh, pulse in. So then it's going to turn on the echo pin, which we set up here. Pin 11. High, which means it's going to turn it on. Pulse timeout. Pulse timeout, which is right here. Boom. 100 milliseconds. Cool. D equals microseconds to centimeters. So we're setting this long to whatever we're getting based on this function right here. Delay 25. And then we're going to just return whatever this value happens to be. So that's how we're getting a value here. We're just running this, running this and returning whatever this happens to be based on these values right here. So we're going to print first. We're going to print the A. Then we're going to print line centimeters after it. Print line basically is print, except it adds at the end, boom, to indent to the new line. That's all it does. And then delay for one second. That's it. That's why you can see every one second, this thing is changing. Boom. 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 Pretty cool, right? So that's pretty much how this function works. And it looks like you're able to get other things. Distance average, which would be cool. Ping, which uh, just basically calls the distance. Get distance, which does the same thing. It just returns whatever the distance gets set to. And then microseconds to centimeter. Long duration. Cool. So that's pretty much it. That's how you use this particular module, this particular uh, sensor that gets attached to our Uno R3. In my next lesson, before we jump to lesson number 11, what I'm going to do is show you how to build a radar with the servo and with this bad boy. So make sure you guys stay tuned. I'm really happy if you guys have made it this far. We're now on lesson 10. In the next lesson, we're going to be doing lesson 11, which is membrane switch module, which as you guys can see is a number pad essentially. And it looks really cool because we're able to assign values based on these keys. Like we're getting pretty close here to being able to build some pretty cool uh, objects. And then we got a temperature and humidity sensor next. So make sure you guys stay tuned. Really appreciate all the support. If you guys are new here, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. But I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a beautiful day, beautiful night, wherever you guys are. Dylan is out.